Sometimes you just want to quickly try out some JavaScript code to see what happens or maybe check what it returns or what methods are available and so on. And in these kinds of situations, I would often just either uh, pop open a console in the browser. So I'll just open the dev tools here and then I can just sort of, you know, start doing whatever I want to test whatever code I want to test. Or for something a little bit more involved, like maybe I want to test out some RxJS stuff, I would just go to one of these stack blitz. I just Google some RxJS stack blitz. This will pop up and then I can work in here and try out some RxJS stuff. So these are both pretty good ways to go about testing something, but they can also both be a little bit awkward, especially if you just want to really quickly check something and not interrupt your workflow too much. So it took me way too long to connect the dots and realize I could just use Node in my terminal to run JavaScript code I want to test. Running JavaScript code is kind of Node.js's thing after all. So if we just open up a terminal and type Node, assuming we have Node.js installed, we can start an REPL session. Uh, I don't know if people actually refer to it as a REPL, but that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. But this stands for Read Evaluate Print Loop. But basically it's going to allow us to enter lines of JavaScript code, and it is going to evaluate that for us when we push enter. So let's say I just have an array of uh, numbers, for example, I can just do one, two, three. And uh, maybe I want to try out the map functionality. So I'm gonna take these values and I'm going to uh, multiply each value by two. And I just wanna see what happens when I do that. I added an extra parentheses there, so I'll try that again. And we can see we get the result two, four, six. We've multiplied each element by two. So this is pretty cool for just running some basic JavaScript code, but let's supercharge this a bit into our own fantastical RxJS playground with a few tricks and tips. Now, first thing you might've noticed already is I have this iTerm hotkey window set up. So if I hit option and space, it's going to just pop up this terminal window full screen instantly, which in terms of sort of staying in the flow of working, this is fantastic for, cause I can just be in VS code here and just instantly have open somewhere where I can test something. Now I'm not going to go through specifically how to set this up in this tutorial, but I will link to instructions in the description. Uh, if you are using iTerm, it's just a matter of setting some preferences basically. And you don't have to do this step. You could just pop open a normal terminal in a separate window, but I find this just a super convenient way to quickly test something. Now let's talk about actually entering in code in this REPL. So as you've seen, I can just type simple lines and it's going to evaluate that for me line by line. But sometimes we might want to do something like enter in some multi-line code. Maybe we want to create an if statement, for example. So there are a couple ways we can do multi-line stuff. We can just hold shift when we hit enter. So if I just start typing and now I hold shift and hit enter, it's not going to evaluate that. It's going to allow me to continue typing on new lines. So then I could finish off that statement here. And if I just hit enter normally, then it is going to be evaluated. Another thing you can do is enter the editor mode, which you can do with dot editor. And that is going to allow you to do multi-line stuff. And when you are done, you can just hit control D and then it will evaluate it at that point. Now this isn't even usually necessary because if you are sort of typing some code that is clearly unfinished, like you have an open bracket, it's not going to evaluate. It's going to go to the next line normally anyway. So like with my if statement I was writing, let's say I were if true, and then I do some opening brackets and hit enter, it's just going to go to the next line and I can continue uh, typing. So this is all pretty cool, but what if we want to use some RxJS code or something from any other kind of third party package? All we're really going to be able to run in here by default is just standard JavaScript. But what I can do here is I'm going to exit out of this uh, REPL session by typing dot exit. And what we can do when we start a new REPL session is we can set the node path environment variable to tell node where our global NPM installs are. And what that is going to allow us to do is use any packages that we have installed globally within that REPL session. Now you can see where your global installs for NPM are either by running NPM root dash G. And you can see here, it tells me where that is, but I also get that warning telling me that this uh, G flag is now deprecated. And you can also run npm root dash dash location equals global. And that is going to tell you as well. Now these two commands might actually point to different locations uh, depending on your configuration. So you might need to use one or the other depending on how Node.js has been configured on your machine. 
So if one isn't working, just use the other. So to start a new session, a new REPL session with this set in the node path, we can just run node path equals and then the value that's returned from the command we just run and then just node. So if I run that command, I have just started a new session now, but now it knows where those globally installed packages are. Now I already have RxJS installed globally. So what I can do now is do const RxJS equals require RxJS. And then I'm going to be able to access anything from RxJS just by using this destructuring syntax. So I can say const uh, interval map from whatever I want to import from RxJS. I can put into this destructuring syntax and say equals RxJS. And now all of those are available to me. If I type out interval, you can see that that is a function that is available for me to use. Uh, same with map and from. So let's give interval a go. We'll say let test equals interval. We'll create a new observable that emits once every second. And I'm going to subscribe to that. And we will just log out that value. And you can see now in the console here, we're getting that interval popping out new numbers every second. And I assigned this to the test variable specifically because I knew this was going to run infinitely. And to stop that, I can run test.unsubscribe, which is a bit awkward as new lines are coming down. So that is surprisingly annoying uh, having that pop down in new lines like that, especially if you're making a few typos, uh, but we got there in the end. But another thing you can do is if this is running and you can't be bothered unsubscribing from it, uh, we can just, you know, just hit control C and it's going to pop us out of the session anyway. However, then to jump back into a new session, we're going to have to type out that same thing again with node path and the, the location to our globally installed packages, which is a bit annoying. So what we can do instead of this is we can set up an alias in our bash or zish config files. So I'm using a Z shell and I have this alias set up to open up my configuration for that here. Again, I'm not going to talk about how to uh, open this up in this tutorial or how to set the configurations because it might be different depending on your environment. Uh, but if you don't know how to create an alias for something, just uh, Google you know, how to create an alias and you'll find lots of information on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a uh, new line here. I'm going to create a new alias called REPL and I'm going to set it to that command I need to run to open that new session with the global packages path configured. So I'll just save this and I'll open a new terminal window so that new configuration applies. The initialization is actually complaining now that I'm using the deprecated flag. So I'm actually just going to go back and change that so we don't get that uh, warning every time, which would be a bit annoying. So let's just remove that line and we'll add the alias back in using the uh, location equals global flag instead. Let's open a new terminal again. This time we don't get that initialization warning. So now when we start a new REPL session, instead of typing node, we're going to use the alias that we created, which was REPL. You can call this whatever you want. And now we are again running that same REPL session, but this time we have our global modules folder configured. So we should be able to do that same thing again now where we can say const RxJS equals require RxJS. And then we're going to be able to see everything that is available in the RxJS package. Now, suppose you want to test out RxJS stuff a lot. For me, when I want to quickly test something out, it's usually some RxJS code. And it's still a little bit annoying to have to require RxJS manually at the beginning of each REPL session. So if you want, you can also set up a script that will run at the start of a session like this. So I just have this in my dot files directory. You can really put this wherever you like, but I have a file called REPL.js. And the basic idea is that this code is going to run when we start a new session. And I'm basically just setting two configurations here. I'm using ignore undefined true so that uh, when I evaluate a line that returns undefined, which is a lot of things, it's just going to uh, be blank. It's not going to say undefined all the time. This isn't required. It's just a sort of little quality of life thing. And then this is the important part where I'm setting the RxJS variable on context here. And I'm setting that to require RxJS. So that means as soon as we start a new session, we are already going to have that RxJS variable defined and we can instantly start importing things from it. So in order to actually use this file, we're going to have to go back again and modify that alias that we set up before. So again, I'm just going to replace that alias and it's the same basic thing. Now we still have uh, the node path set to our global module location. We're still running node. 
but we also supply it with that file that we just created. Again, mine lives in my .files directory, but yours can live wherever you like. We just need to supply that file to this alias. All right, once again, let's save that. And we will again have to start a new terminal session. So I'll start a new REPL session again, just by typing our alias REPL. And now we can just jump straight into importing whatever we want from RxJS. So let's say I want map, tap, switch map, interval from merge map. I'm going to import all of that from RxJS, which we've already set up. And now all of those are going to be available to us. So all we've done in that file is just basically set up that RxJS object where requiring RxJS, but you can set up whatever you like in that file to suit whatever modules you want to use or just whatever things you want available by default. And another cool thing we can do, which we sort of saw before, is that everything is available on that RxJS object. So if we type RxJS dot and then just hit tab twice, we can see everything that is available, all the operators that are available to us on RxJS. So if you wanna really feel like you're being fancy and efficient, you can just sort of pop this open as a reference, find what you're interested in. Uh, let's say we're interested in taking a look at the uh, ignore elements operator, for example. So what I can do is just pop open a new terminal here, start writing open. And since I frequently use the rxjs.dev website, uh, I already have this sort of in my history here. Uh, but what I can do is just write open the rxjs documentation website and then I can just append whatever operator I'm interested in on the end here. So in this case, I'm interested in ignore elements. So I can pop that in there, hit enter, and then I have instant documentation available to me as well. So aside from this being convenient for your general workflow, it is also a good way to study up on RxJS operators. Uh, if you've got a spare moment, pop open the terminal, start a REPL session, pick out one of these operators and see if you can do something with it. So let's say we want to see what it is that ignore elements does exactly. So after viewing the docs, we could come back to our REPL session. We can uh, pull in what we need from RxJS. So for this example, I'm going to use from to create a new stream for me. And I'm going to pull in ignore elements as well. So it looks like I've already imported from. So now what I'm going to do to test this is I'm just going to create uh, one stream that is going to emit three values and then complete. And I'm going to create a second stream that pipes onto that first stream and it's going to add that ignore elements operator. So now with our two separate streams defined, I might take a look to see what the first stream does. So I'm going to subscribe to that. And once again, just log out the uh, values and you can see we get the values one, two, three, and then it completes. So now let's do the uh, same thing again, but this time let's do it with our second stream, the one that has that ignore elements operator piped onto it. And if we do this, we can see that we get no emissions. So we don't get any emissions from our second stream. We just get whatever it is that the subscribe call returns, which is a reference to the subscription. So to be more clear on what exactly is happening, we could add complete and error handlers as well. So again, let's subscribe to stream two. This time we are going to add in the error and complete handlers for our observers. So I'm going to do the on next handler here and we will log out the value. We will add the error handler as well and log out any errors if there are any. And we will also add in the complete handler and we'll just log out I completed. So let's run this again now. And now it's a bit more clear to see that ignore elements causes the stream to ignore all of the emissions from the stream, but we still get that notification when it completes. So I've been using this for a little while now and I'm just finding it endlessly useful compared to my old workflow of either opening up the browser console or a stack blitz to test something. I so often just quickly pop open this terminal session. Maybe I've got a bit of code in my actual project I just want to test out separately. And so I can just paste that in here. I can try different things with it. I can try out new operators, different operators, uh, you know, see what streams are returning what. And I think the most important thing is that I don't feel like I'm being taken out of my normal workflow. This sort of just feels like an extension to what I'm doing. So there was a few useful resources I found in setting this stuff up. Uh, so I'll link to some things I found when setting this up myself, as well as some information on you know, setting up aliases and things like that. 
So hopefully you can set up your own little awesome playground that you can work either with RxJS or other stuff if you prefer. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy your new magical playground. As always, if you did enjoy the video, if you found it useful, a like or subscribe would be very much appreciated. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video.